welcome to you in this place and in the place that you are today. In Jesus, when two or three gather together, we are confident that God is with us and among us. Next Sunday, the 16th, we plan to gather face-to-face worship here in Chapel Street at 9.30. We would welcome you all. There will be some changes, the seating arrangements. We'll be maintaining social hygiene distancing practices and we will not be singing uh, for a little while yet. There will also be no sharing of morning tea after the service, but we encourage you to invite people back to your place for a cuppa or out to a local coffee shop to continue our fellowship time together. Indeed, exciting times. Today we're also celebrating uh, Holy Communion. Uh, Therefore, if you haven't prepared any bread or wine, juice or water, you might like to pause the video now and get those elements and return to us as we continue in worship. So we gather in the name of Jesus Christ, and so we pray. Spirit of God, we have gathered here in community, both gathered and beyond. A place has been made for each of us, Let what we say and do be real and honest, thus preparing ourselves for the life in this world. Amen. Our candle is lit today, reminding us the light of Christ is shining within us. The Bible has been opened, and in it we find inspiration through God's word printed and preached and read. And we pour the water this morning, this afternoon and tonight, in this way, reminding ourselves of our baptism into Christ and into the church. The Ancient of Days has breathed into this land life and to all her peoples. From time beyond our reckoning, the Ghana people have blessed this place through their customs, their traditions, their care and concern and their rich cultural history. Today we honour their elders, leaders past and present. May we walk respectfully on this land and in our working together in relationships for reconciliation, truth, now and into the future. The song we sing this morning today is God of Creation. Join together in prayer. 
in this moment and in this time and in this place, we pray. God, we do not want to be a people of fear. We want to be a people of courage. We do not want to be a people who protect only our safety. We want to be people who protect our neighbour's safety. We do not want to be a people of greed. We want to be a people of generosity. We are your people, O God. We want to be giving, loving and respectful. Wherever we are, we do not want to be a people of fear. We want to be a people of courage. May it be so. Amen. And we sing or listen together the song, Spirit of Peace. today is from Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds he went up the mountain to pray by himself. When evening came he was there alone but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, Is it a ghost? And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And this is the word of the Lord. There was a great flood. The River Murray had burst its banks and was flooding all uh, great areas and towns and houses and fruit orchards. We were children at primary school. The main part of the village was under threat of being flooded if the levee banks burst. There were sandbag levee banks holding back the water. If the levee bank broke, 
the school would be flooded and we were coached with what to do if that happened. The day came when Mr Rogers came running in and called to the teacher, the bank is moving. And uh, so um, out we went with the teacher running for higher ground, all 35 of us. We were told to run to the high ground and to run through the orchards. And if we saw any adults to call out to them, the bank is breaking. No, no mobile phones then. Soon the little grey Fergie tractors were doing their work, pushing the sand and the sandbags back into the bank. The bank was secured, the village and the school saved. We had an extra long September holidays. In the flood, we children, or at least some of us, felt we'd played our part to help during the crisis by our prompt response and our spreading of the alarm. We helped in other ways too, and it was our own lived experience, our own story of determination and courage and hope in crisis. Coupled with this with Sunday school at the Little Rampco Methodist Sunday School, listening to stories from the Bible and stories of Jesus, inspiring stories, sometimes confusing, those of a certain age, do you remember the song, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus I Love to Hear? Of course, our understandings change over time. It has been said, said we know who we are in part by the stories we tell ourselves and the stories others tell about us. We know who we are in relation to each other and to God by the stories we share. And we can add our relationship to the living environment. This morning we heard part of the gospel story about Jesus from Matthew. All through Matthew, Jesus is presented as God with us. In the birth story, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Right to the ending with, with Jesus' final words to his disciples, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Much of the uh, Bible was written through the lens of trauma, including Matthew, for this was written not long after the destruction of Jerusalem around AD 70. But Matthew is also written through the strong lens of faith and trust in God, found in this remarkable person, Jesus. Immediately prior to our story today, Jesus had been teaching. He hears the terrible news of John the Baptist's death, his brutal death. He attempts to find solitude. Crowds follow. The huge crowd is fed. Now Jesus is exhausted. Now disciples are on to the other side of the boat, we hear in today's reading. The crowds going home or settling down to sleep overnight in the grass. Jesus going to the solitary place and the storm arises on the sea. Jesus first seen as a ghost walking on water, sense of mystery here, and the fear. Jesus reassurance, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter calls out and steps out, Again, fear and failure and sinking, then the hand of Jesus saved. Back in the boat, then Matthew's message from the mouths of the disciples, they revere him, truly you are the son of God. Matthew writes in his day to shine a light on Jesus, to reveal his identity, the one to bring hope and meaning. Put your trust in this Jesus, and therefore, he says, keep faith and courage to keep following the way of Jesus, even through turbulent times. Here is God with us. The Old Testament reading for this day in the book of Genesis in chapter 37, following the Psalm reading in Psalm 105, both not being read today, but is the story of Joseph sold into slavery a story of jealousy and family treachery, of crisis and rescue, crisis and rescue. 
It is part of a much bigger narrative of crisis and liberation in the Hebrew people's story. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, set for today, affirms the saving grace of Jesus. The readings and the stories for today encourage us. In the stormy waters of life are part of the bigger picture, that we all matter personally and as, a, as community, local and world community. God with us. Jesus lifted Peter out of the stormy waters. Peter went on to gather understanding and grow in faith, encountering bigger challenges and following faithfully to the end. As others have said, it took the death and the resurrection of Jesus for Peter and the disciples to get their act together and actually continue the movement that Jesus started. Now today, in our time of COVID-19, we find other related situations being revealed. It has been said we are all in the same boat in the pandemic. We could, but that is not the whole story. It's more like we are all in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. Yes. We need to follow faithfully what our medical, political and policing leaders are directing us to keep safe our neighbours and ourselves. And our governments are currently helping with some finances for some people. But the COVID pandemic has even further revealed what is that which is not what it should be. In our youth, my friends and I were inspired through the minister of our church by the stories of lives of people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King, powerful protest leader of African Americans and the poor in the 1960s. I must say too that in Australia, we too had Charles Perkins and the Freedom Rides and Ujuru, Kath Walker, and others. Today, COVID-19 and Black Matter times bring us Reverend Alvin Jackson, who was a, a, a colleague of Reverend Martin Luther King and is f still very much involved in Jesus' work in the US. Reverend Jackson recently named five evils in current society. The first three are systemic poverty, racism, and environmental degradation. Here in our own country, many Indigenous leaders are speaking out too. The effects of poverty are made even more obvious at this time when peoples and places of poverty are much more helpless to avoid contagion from the current epidemic. What to do? Work to change the systems of economics causing systemic poverty? World Council of Churches has put out a paper including changes to systems of economy. The National Assembly of the Uniting Church as well as Social Justice have pu published papers on priorities to truly address poverty to make some changes. The effects of environmental degradation are being made clear not only by recent fires, but by the lessening of some of the conditions contributing to our environment in crisis. Skies are clearer. Some waters like those of Venice are clearer. Some evidence for action in the less than five minutes to midnight chance to make critical changes for the environment. There is much to be done now. Do we have the committed hope and faith in action to give up some things and take strong steps for change? Would we have the determination, courage and audacity to follow through with active faith and hope to change the story of where we are hidden? This is International Day of Indigenous Peoples. Here at Morialta, our Gateways uh, group are reading 
the book Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe. Here we find hidden away stories of the Aboriginal people as they had been before uh, modern history. People engaged in agriculture, aspects of land management, food production and storage, and much more. These suppressed stories needing to be told now and heard could make a difference to what might yet be. The account we read from the Bible for today is surely for us personally as well as community. A personal story. A youth worker took a group of young people to a church service, Pentecostal church, their own choice and that of their families. During the service at prayer time, the pastor called for the, le the leader by name to come down a real shock. You can imagine the hesitation, but she decided to go forward. The pastor told her that he had had a vision of her standing in the strong current of a river. She goes under, but comes up immediately and stands against the current. Of course, there was prayer. Sometimes later, in traumatic situations in ministry, she would remember and gain strength from that story. May we find hope and faith in the help of the Spirit of Jesus, God with us, particularly in time of trauma, and the hand of our neighbour to help us through. And may we be the helping hand for our neighbour too. May our stories be intertwined with the story and the way of Jesus. May opportunities be made and taken with faith and hope for a better, fairer and life-saving world for the whole of creation. Then, in the same storm, we can be closer to being in the same boat. Here is a song to listen to or to sing, a song of encouragement. Choose kindness. Let's join in together in prayer for the offering of ourselves and the gifts that we give to the church for God's work. Spirit of God, brooding over the waters of our chaos, inspire us to generous 
living. Breath of God, inspiring communication among strangers, make us your channels of peace. May we give and live in deep thankfulness. Take all that we offer, our gifts and our very selves, and use them to make known your great works of justice among all people and proclaim the good news of your never-ending love. In the name of Christ, who calms our deepest fears, we pray. Amen. This is a table not set for an illustrious banquet. It is sparsely set. One plate, one cup. It is food at its simplest, bread and wine, but it is an extravagant feast. This meal is not the exclusive domain of a knowing few. Jesus invited all to the feast of peace. And he risked everything in compassion. Jesus promised to make himself known in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. Here at this table, love pours out stronger than death. God of our present season winter and all of seasons and calm waters and turbulent waters of life, together with all creation we sing holy, holy, recreating God Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we recall today again the story of the Last Supper. When Jesus and his friends had gathered around a table, after they'd finished eating, Jesus took some bread, prayed a prayer of thanks to God, blessed it and broke it. And gave it to his friends saying, take, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup later on, giving thanks. He gave it to his friends saying, drink from this, all of you. For this is the sign of the new covenant in 
my blood between you and me and God. Do this as you remember me. Therefore, today, let us break bread together. And so we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, in this act of eating of bread and drinking of wine, flow in and around us. Open our eyes to the trueness of the brokenness of the world, our hearts with love and respect for our neighbours. Motivate us with courage through our hands and our feet, partnering with others and ready to take our role as agents of change and reconciliation. So in communion we pray and joining our voices with those voices of all the ages in saying together the Lord's Prayer. O God of all and in all, hallowed be your name. May your way of love come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For you reign in the glory that is love, now and forever. Amen. And so we eat this bread and we acknowledge our place in the fractured, suffering and beautiful world. We drink the cup as an act of faith, believing that brokenness is not the end of the story, but that forgiveness is real and the active healing power of life reconciles us and recreates all new things. The cup of Christ. So at this table, it is ready and set. Come, take your place. Come with your questions, with your answers. Come with your flaws and imperfections. Come because you love a little and you want to love more. All is ready. We receive the gifts of God, the bread of life, the compassion of Christ. We take the time now to share in communion where you are by breaking bread and drinking of the cup. join together in prayer we thank you God of compassion that you have nourished us with the bread of life and the wine of hope as in Christ your love flowed out of these around the table to your friends so may our love and your love flow through us together as friends that we might be open to others and invite others to share in the love that is known here through Jesus Christ, our hope and our life. Amen. We bring our prayers for others and for ourselves. Timeless God, in this era of widespread COVID-19 trauma 
and increasing economic devastation, firstly, we honour and pray for the helping hands of many, for those at the coalface, medical, policing, scientists, food providers, and many more. Those we know and those we do not know, we hold them in prayer. May we always choose to follow closely the measures of safety for the benefit of others and ourselves. Just as Jesus extended his hand to Peter, may we join in with others to extend a helping hand to those trapped in the waters of chaos in their lives, those nearby and those further out. We pray for truth-telling and healing from racism in our own country and in the wider world, and that this begins with me, we know. We pray for those suffering from violence at home or elsewhere. May they be enabled to step out of the boat and the waters of victim victimisation and find trusted hands to help them. May those fleeing violence, war and starvation encounter individuals, communities and countries standing out from the crowd who share your welcoming heart and practical love. For those who suffer from extortion and injustice, political or religious oppression, cruel economic exploitation or domestic tyranny, for those who seek asylum and refuge, who can find no home. We pray too for those who are sick, frightened, confused and lonely, those we know and those we do not know. We pray for near at hand neighbours, at work, in our street, in supermarkets, banks, schools and hospitals, all who are in trouble and at their wit's end. For our bruised and weeping neighbours, those who just made, have just been made redundant, pained by divorce, grieving over a wayward child or weeping hot tears at a graveside. Holy friend, we pray for the neighbours in our church, the weak and the strong, the shy and the outgoing, the leaders and the followers, the newcomers and the familiar faces, those bearing secret burdens and those buoyant with happiness. May we trust your way and love our neighbour as ourselves. Amen. Please join us in singing or listening to the song, Where the Spirit Is.
And so we conclude our time in worship today, but our service continues. Our blessing. Give thanks to God who lives in the whirlwind and calms the storms. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to God who is with us when we sink in despair and lifts us into joy again. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to God that we have received this good news. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to God that we are sent to bear the good news to others. Thanks be to God. In the name of Christ. Amen.